Hi, I'm Niall Heaney. This is my 2007 Ford F-250 Super Duty Harley Davidson pickup truck. Uh, this truck was built in 2007. It has only got 22,279 miles on it. It's in immaculate condition. We normally sell boats for a living, but um, I like to keep the odd American pickup truck around. This has been my truck for the last year or so and we've decided it's time to move it on to a new home so we thought we'd do a wee video tour to show you the condition that the truck's in show you the um, around the engine bay, the interior tell you a bit about the history of the truck and hopefully give you a better idea um, about whether it might be the right one for you The big thing that attracted me to this truck apart from the fact that it looks completely badass is that it had only 20, 21,000 miles or something on it whenever I got it or 20,000 I think it had um, so super low mileage, the thing has hardly ever been used um, and I was a wee bit, uh, you know, I was a bit curious about why that was but whenever I found out the history of the truck, spoke to the, the, the seller, previous seller, um, it all stacked up. So the truck was originally sold in Texas, in the, in the US, in like September 2007. It came into Ireland through Dublin port in February 2008. We've got all the paperwork to support all that, so she was imported. To Ireland in February 2008. Um, as far as we know she had only one owner then um, in Ireland and she was very sparingly used. You know the guy would have taken her to shows, the, the, the story was he, he would take it down through the village, he lo lived in a local village, take it down through the village at Christmas time, Santa would ride in the back of the truck. So it was a, it was a really just a toy for him um, and it did very very few miles. There's a um, a vehicle test report from 2011, which is whenever she would have been first eligible for a, like an MOT or the equivalent of the MOT in the Republic of Ireland. <clears throat> so it had that done in 2011. The odometer reading then was 18,000 miles. The owner unfortunately passed away shortly after that, I think, and it was in storage then, in dry storage for I think two or three years before the family put it on the market. So we bought the truck from the family in I think it was October, November, this time last year, it had 20,000 miles on it. It was, you know, it sort of came out of a barn, so um, the truck was starting to drive it okay, but it needed a bit of work done. The brakes had seized and stuff like that there, so we went through a big scheme of work to get it right back up to tip top condition. I imported it as, uh, into the UK, so brought it off the, took it off the Southern Ireland plates, got put it on a, a UK plate, so it's a Northern Ireland plate, but you can take this thing through anywhere through England, Scotland, Wales, it's fully UK registered. Um, we've got all the proper paperwork, we've got a proper UK tax book for it. Um, and it means now it can go anywhere throughout the um, UK or Ireland um, for sale. So it's a genuine truck. It has had absolutely zero bodywork. Um, as far as I can tell, the bodywork is unbelievable in this thing. Really straight, um, original truck. Um, and because it's the Harley Davidson edition, she's got all the toys on her. You know, it's the leather interior, all the Harley, Harley, Harley Davidson styling. Um, she's also had a six inch lift kit put on her at some point in the past. We think this was done in the States. So she's got a six, full six inch lift and level kit. So she's leveled out. You know, the nose doesn't rake forward. She sits totally level. She's got big uh, mud grabber tires, 37 inch tires on her on 20 inch rims. Chrome, their XD series chrome alloys. The thing just looks amazing. It's a really mean looking truck. Turns, heads, everywhere it goes. It draws a serious amount of attention. It's a great marketing thing. We branded it up with our Gulfstream Boats logo. And um, you know, everywhere you go, it just it draws so much attention. The truck is currently MOT'd until the 25th of June 2019. So it's got almost full year's MOT. And it's on a dateless Northern Ireland Reg plate which is going with it so you get a dateless plate um, which is included in the sale as well um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you around the truck sort of point out some of the things about it that might be a wee bit different or that set it apart from the competition uh, show you the interior, fire up the engine, have a look at the engine bay and just give you a much better idea of the sort of shape that it's in the thing that makes this truck so noticeable is this, its sheer size you know it's a, it's a huge big truck um, you know you have to climb up into it you'd almost People make a joke about needing a step ladder to get in and out of American pickup trucks. This one here, it sort of would make sense because you do have to be careful getting in and out of it, especially getting out of it. I've had people go over their ankles and stuff, so you've got to be careful getting out of it. But it's a huge truck. It's got this big imposing grill in the front of it. 
So this being a Harley Davidson spec one is totally different from the standard F250 grill. So it has this like bullet chrome style uh, front face on it with these. So this is this this here is plastic, but these wee bits here are aluminium um, with a sh sort of shiny face on them. Nice wee aluminium grill across the front of the bumper as well. You've got these chrome uh, tone eye, tone eyes on the uh, on the front, and then set in behind this grill. You get your front fog lights, so you get two big fog lights in behind there, so the thing looks really mean at night time, you know, all the, all the lights on it. You've also got that sort of row of um, orange uh, towing lights. You get, all, you get those in all the, the heavy duty American pickup trucks. I didn't like the look of the orange, I thought with the rest of the truck being sort of black, black, um, with a wee bit of chrome, the orange looked out of place, so we have, we've, we've painted those uh, roof lights. Um, with like a smoked finish, so during the daytime they just look completely black. At nighttime, with the lights are on, you can sort of see a wee bit of orange coming through them. So the grill is really mean looking. The bonnet is in great condition. It's obviously jet black paintwork. Um, this here is plastic. This bit here is like cast iron, so really solid. There are a few wee stone chips on the uh, on the iron bumper, but nothing really worth talking about. You know, just a few wee minor stone chips. You have to be up close to see them. But other than that, the rest of the, the, the grill and the bonnet is perfect. There's no stone chips in the bonnet. The headlights are like smoked sort of black affairs. Again, I think that's part of the Harley Davidson specs. They're a wee bit mean looking. They tie in with a colour scheme on the rest of the truck. So really imposing grill. I put a brand new Ford badge on it there about a month ago because the old one had started to sort of discolour a wee bit. So it's a brand new Ford badge. It's actually the same size badge as you get on a standard UK Ranger, Ford Ranger. So that sort of sets off the front really well and she looks really smart. Taking a look then at the bodywork done on the driver's side, <clears throat> she's in fantastic condition. She does have these extended wheel arches on her, front and back, so they're, um, they're, they're not standard. They've been added as, at the same time that the lift kit and stuff was put on. So because these, um, she's got these big 13 and a half inch wide tires, they do set out proud of the body a wee bit, so these extended wheel arches help to sort of cover those, those bigger wheels and tires. Um, we've got the Harley Davidson badge on the side of her, the F250 Super Duty badge, it's all factory badge in, it's all in great condition. The bodywork is down along this side is absolutely mint. She has these big towing mirrors, extendable towing mirrors, so you can pull them out if you're towing a wide load, a boat, a caravan or something, so they're really handy to just slide in and out. Um, we've got Harley Davidson side steps on her as well, so chrome side steps with plastic inlays, with, again with the Harley Davidson logo set into the steps. Um, so they look the part, really set the thing off as well, and because she's got that leveling kit, you know, the thing just sits, it's a lot nicer stance on the road. The bodywork back here is absolutely pristine, um, no corrosion or anything around the fuel filler cap, it's like brand new. We've got the yeah, extended wheel arches back here, Harley Davidson 4x4 badge in, um, right the way back to the corner there, it's just, it's absolutely, it's like a mirror finish, pr pristine bodywork all the way around there. Taking a look then at the passenger side of the truck, it's also in absolutely immaculate condition. I really can't stress how good the bodywork is in this thing. There's no scratches, no scuffs, there's no uh, stone chips or nothing on, up around the front quarter panel. Front door up here is in great condition. Again, the mirror over here is good as well. It slides out too um, if you're towing with it. Um, the side step looks the part here. Again, highly polished chrome, looks like brand new. Um, rear quarter panels are good as well. There are two wee things, two wee minor defects on this side that I need to show you. One is on this uh, passenger door here. <coughs> it's going a bit closer. You can just see here a couple of wee minor bits. Now I got a, I got a, a little tin of touch up to touch that in, but I, it's my own fault. I had the door open and I walked in it with something and it made this, it just scratched it there. But with a touch up in it, you can't really see it, but I was to say I was annoyed. <laughs> It's a massive understatement, but I was really annoyed because that was perfect. So it has that. Now it hasn't dented it or anything. It's literally just a wee scratch in the paint. And there's another wee tiny scratch in the paint just here, which is a stone chip. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, it, it only appeared there maybe a month ago or something, or two or three weeks ago. Wee tiny, I've just touched that in as well. That you do just have to be careful because those tires are so wide, they do stick out beyond the body work a wee bit. You gotta be careful um, if you're going over um, you know, rough ground or whatever, but I think it's maybe the tires maybe picked up wee stones, just chipped that there. But literally, other than that, the rest of the bodywork all the way around the truck's perfect. 
uh, extended wheel arches back here are in good condition. Again, Harley Davidson 4x4 stickers is the original factory stickers are in great order. She's got, um, not too sure if that's the factory exhaust or like an aftermarket um, tailpiece, tailpipe, but it's a massive thing. It's like six inch diameter, chrome, polished chrome tailpipe, looks the part. This thing sounds amazing as well. She's super loud. Um, and that alone, the sound alone, draws attention. So people sort of hear it first, then turn around and they're blown away by it. But um, the exhaust sounds really good. And then taking a look across the back end of her, the tailgate as well is in perfect condition. No chips or dents or anything in it. Got the Ford badge over here. Again, Harley Davidson, Super Duty badge in there. We got the factory bumper here with the um, plastic top on it. It's, it's cast iron as well, so super solid bumper. No damage in it. She does have the parking sensors, but to be fair, I'm not sure if they're working. Um, they, they probably need reprogrammed or something. The wee parking light usually flashes up that the parking sensors are off. So there is a wee fault in the parking sensors, but I don't really use them that much. I mean, if you're this thing here, I always say you do a lot of walking if you're in a pickup truck like this because you're not parking <laughs> anywhere close where you want to go. You sort of park half a mile away and walk in. So I'm never trying to squeeze in the wee tiny parking spaces that like you always find somewhere, somewhere big to park. Um, somewhere out of the way, I mean, sort of big spaces. So the back end of it is good. We have um, had these reversing lights installed, both sides. They're really nice, bright LED reversing lights. Um, I got the tow bar made for it recently as well. That was only installed in like May or June of this year. Um, so uh, it's a factory, sorry, it's not a factory. It's a factory receiver hitch. And then we had this here um, UK um, bracket. So we've got a high adjustable UK ball on there and that bolts in. So it's easy to remove it. Um, it's rated to carry up to three and a half, tow up to three and a half tons. The truck from the factory will tow like maybe up to six tons or something. Um, but we, the way we have it set up at the minute is for three and a half, which is the same as a standard UK 4x4. And she's also got a UK 7 pin trailer socket on there as well. So to open the tailgate, uh, take a look inside the bed of the truck. Um, it's a huge bed. This thing, F-250 Super Duty, it's uh, over eight foot long. It's five foot wide. So you will get a sheet of eight by four in there on its flat. So it does, if you wanted to use this thing, this thing's really nice. Like, um, it's probably more likely it's gonna be bought as a bit of a toy, but if you did want to use this as a working truck, you've got a huge big usable load, load bed. And the F-250 means it's a two and a half ton truck, so what I know about these things, it means that she's rated to carry two and a half tons, so she is a big working pickup truck if you want to use it for that. Um, the bed is in pretty good condition, a few scuffs and scrapes on her, so she obviously has been used a bit. Um, not by me, this is the way she was whenever we got her, but um, a few scuffs and scrapes, but nothing major. And at the end of the day, it is a pickup truck, and you know you're not really looking at this from the outside. Also, because this truck's so high, you can't even really see under the, the the bed of the truck. Um, you know, whenever you're walking around it. So, uh, but everything's in good order. The hinges and stuff on the tailgate, these little securing straps. Um, you know, there's no rust or anything in there. It all does look the part. As part of the process of bringing the truck into the UK and getting it on a proper UK tax book we decided to downplate it. So that's a paperwork exercise. It means that instead of the thing being rated to like carry up or tow up to six tons and carry up to like two and a half ton, um, we downplated it. So it's like a three and a half ton vehicle weight with a three and a half ton towing weight. And that just means, I did it for two reasons. One is it meant that I could uh, tax it and MOT it as a regular car, just a large four by four. So I could, you can tow it on a regular car license um, and you don't, you don't need a PSV or anything. If, now, if you wanted to, you can take the plate off and put it back to uh, like a private HGV. So it's a heavy goods vehicle, but that means you can carry the full capacity that the thing was designed at the factory to carry. You can tow more with it. If you want to put like a fifth wheel trailer on behind it, you can do all that stuff. But the, the implications of that are that you've got to then get a PSV as opposed to MOT. And I think you're supposed to put a tachograph in it or something as well. And, a, and the insurance is a wee bit different. And you need, a, you need a HGV license to drive it as well. So I didn't want to be bothered with all that hassle. I just want this thing as a private truck for towing the odd boat and a bit of promotion with the, with the business and stuff like that. So we've got it uh, downplated to three and a half ton on a standard uh, UK tax book as a, as a standard 4x4 and I can drive it with my ordinary license. So it suited me to do that. But if you want to change it back, you can. But that's all done. It's all totally... Um, 
above board, done the, done by the numbers, and all the paperwork's there to support that as well. So we'll take a wee look inside here now. Being the Harley Davidson edition, she's obviously got a full leather interior, which really makes a big difference in these trucks, especially if you're using it as like a, like we were, like a, a wee bit of a thing for showing off at the weekends, or if you're taking it to shows, or using it for a bit of promotional work. You want the thing to be nice on the inside, and the cloth interior interiors on these trucks really do them no justice at all. So the fact is, the full leather interior looks really looks really well. You've also got these gloss black Harley Davidson trim panels throughout her, so you got them on the door panel door cards. Also on the dash with the wee, so it's gloss black panels with little Hardy Davidson logos sort of uh, repeated on them. Um, she's got a heated seat, full heated seats for the front seat driver and passenger, and they're also fully electrically adjustable. So adjustable lumbar support, four and a half height adjustable, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got power pedals as well, so you can adjust the pedals electrically in and out so you can get a comfortable steering position. It's got tilt position adjust on the steering wheel and stuff like that as well. So we'll jump up in her now, take a wee look around here. This truck has a four seat version, so she basically has four captain's chairs in her. So two big, obviously the front seat passengers get big captain's chairs with a side rest here. And they get another two captain's chairs in the back of her, which we'll take a look at in a minute. All the interiors full Harley Davidson spec, the Harley Davidson badging set into the seats, two tone leather seating. It's all in perfect condition. There's nothing. There's no rips or tears or damage or anything. With leather cover on the uh, on the console at the front seat here. Big storage console. You get like a CD rack in here. Huge bit of storage underneath that. Two big cup holders. Um, glove box there as well. Pretty good size in there. All the original manuals and handbooks are all in it. Um, bit of storage on the top of the dash as well for odds and ends. Uh, vanity mirrors. Um, both. Uh, both of the sun visors, obviously the wee screen for the sunroof is working as well. Full black interior, so black carpet and black headline and black upholstery, black dash, so um, it all really looks the part. We'll take a wee look in the back end of her now, but all the interior up in here is perfect, great condition. Um, and, and having only done 20, 22,000 miles, you would expect this thing to be like really fresh and tight and solid and nice, and it is. Really good order. One thing I do have to point out is there's one wee small crack in the windscreen down here in the lower left hand corner. It was like that whenever I got it and it's not an MOT failure because it's well away from your line of vision. Um, so we just left it. Um, it hasn't got any worse or anything, um, but it is there just so don't want anybody to be disappointed if they come and look at this thing and want to know that, know that that's there. So, But other than that, everything up in here is perfect. I'll just walk you through the, the dash and the control. So over here on the left hand side, we've got our, um, headlight controls you do have an auto set in there as well so she's automatic headlights so she could bring the lights on herself after dark which is really good you got a dimmer adjust there for your dashboard that's your uh, power steering or power pedals switch so you can adjust your pedal position there um, on the steering wheel we have full cruise control um, with all your you know set accelerate up and down off and on on the left hand side on the right hand side you got full volume controls and stereo controls you can also adjust your temperature up and down so see there Temperature controls, these are all working as well. Fan controls, up and down on the steering wheel, and you've got your stereo volume. Don't be afraid, don't and you've got your next and mode controls. So all the steering wheel controls are working, horn in the center of it. Um, you've got an indicator stock here on the left hand side with wiper controls. This is your shifter, so she's column shifter. She's got a tow haul mode as well, so you can push the switch in if you're towing with her. She's obviously an automatic, five speed automatic. Um, the dash then, as you can see, we've currently got 200 and, sorry, 22,279 miles on it. All the usual instruments, I'll just turn on the lights here, so it brings on the backlight and the dash. Oil pressure, fuel, turbo boost, taco, um, all the usual sort of stuff. And then we've got a trip, con trip computer with your controls here for it, so info setup reset. So this tells you trip mileage, Distance to empty, which I find to be really accurate actually. Uh, fuel economy, 10.4 miles a gallon. That's, that's for around the town driving. On a, on a run, you can I, you can get up to about 15 or so, maybe 16, but if you're at all concerned with fuel economy, don't buy this truck, because it's not the right thing for you. So um, if you have to spend any time thinking about that one, just cross it off the list. Engine hours are 618 as well. Uh, and then back to that, gives you your, your uh, we compass heading is on there as well over here then we've got our controls for the 4x4 system so she's two-wheel drive normally you've got four-wheel drive high and four-wheel drive low really good 
you know, for we would use that if we were pulling heavy boats or anything up out of slipways and stuff. Not that I've really, I've only launched this, uh, boats with this thing a couple of times. This is your park distance controller. Um, but as I said, I'm not too sure if that's fully working. This is your rear window. So you got a sliding rear window out into the, the, the cab. So it's working as well. So if you've got any people hanging out back there, you can talk to them. Um, you've got trailer brake controllers. Again, now this is some a system that I don't think, well, I've never used it. I think it's more if you're using like a fifth wheel or an American system, you can adjust your trailer brakes from here. Um, auxiliary switches. There is like a load leveling uh, suspension helper on the back end of her. So she's leaf spring suspension, but she has twin airbags. So you can, there's weak compressor system. So you can push uh, this switch here and that'll pump her up. So if you find, that's how you release the pressure. So if you find you put a big heavy load in the back of her and she's sagging, you can use that there to pump her back up again. Like, not really something I've ever used because I haven't really had a heavy load on, but it's all there and working. We've got a six disc CD changer, front loading CD changer and stereo system, it's all in really good working order with those steering wheel controls. Then you've got your climate control system, she's obviously got full air con, she's blowing cold air, the air condition's working perfect. We've got a wee power point here, wee 12 volt power supply. Um, there's another wee cigarette lighter, socket down there, ashtray, glock box and stuff like that. So, um, everything on the dash is working this truck, this truck is really smart. Um, we've also got a, a sunroof up here, which is all working perfectly as well factory sunroof with the wee sliding cover too so you can screen it off when you're when it's closed this is your gloss black paneling with the wee Harley Davidson logo set in it as well you also have that repeated over here and um, we've got our Harley Davidson build plate so the chassis number on there build year production number um, super duty so she is a, a factory original Harley Davidson one taking a look then in the back of the truck um, again, doors and door jams and panels and stuff are all perfect. You know, like the paint finish even in the door jams. This truck is immaculate. The door cards are perfect. There's no wear or anything over the wee tread plates whenever you're, you know, from people getting in and out of the, in and out of the vehicle. Um, it's been very lightly used. I'd say the back seats have hardly ever been used. Again, we've got this Harley Davidson door trim panel here, gloss black with the Harley logos in there. Um, electric windows on the back of her as well as in the front and full leather captain's chairs in the back of the uh, the back of the truck so two big captain seats there in the back end of her so the back seats are basically the exact same as the front seats they're manually adjustable so but you do have like we chrome handled adjusters on the side of them uh, they're not heated so they're not heated and they're not electrically adjustable but they are the same seat bucket style full leather seats two-tone leather with a harley davidson badge in them they're really comfortable this thing would be a fantastic road trip car and you know, if you were looking to go away or do one of those cannonball runs or something, you know, some of those events, be a great car to go away with, you know, three or four people. There's loads of room to spread out. You've got a huge big console here in the center as well. Leather wrap top, big, two big cup holders, absolutely cavernous storage space inside it. And you've also got room for a bit of storage behind the seats here, uh, back in here as well. Everything's in perfect condition. Got these big chunky, um, Handholds here. We got more handholds here. We got coat hooks back here. Um, we got storage pockets in the, the seat backs. Um, we got a big overall uh, mat back in here as well. Covers the you know goes right the way across her. So nice big mat to keep the factory carpets nice and clean and tidy. And again, everything is pristine. It's like brand new back in here. Turning on the lights, then you can see how she looks with all, with all those lights on. So as I was saying up, up on the roof there, you can sort of just see the orange uh, tinge coming through those smoke black lenses on the roof lights. Obviously you get your standard headlights and stuff here. And these are your fogs and behind the grills. They do look really smart, I think, after dark. And then the indicators double up as like running lights. So you get like orange running run lights and they double up as the, as the indicators. We actually did the full light conversion on it ourselves. So had a guy do it there earlier this year. Because whenever I bought her, she was still uh, set up on full American lights, so we had to change over the indicators in the back end of her. So we got proper orange indicators in the rear, add the reversing lights, um, and just make her to the UK spec. So that's all being done. I Means she'll sail through her next MOT without any trouble. This truck is the diesel version, so she's fitted with a six-liter Ford six-liter power stroke V8 diesel. It makes 325 horsepower and 570 foot-pounds of torque. It's a seriously beefy engine. Um, this because this one's only got 22,000 miles on it as well. It's almost like brand new. These things will run in the states 
I was trying to sort of price one of these in, in America to get an idea of the value that they would have over there, and I literally couldn't find one for sale with less than like 70,000 miles on it. And even they were looking for $30,000 or something for a standard one, not even a Harley Davidson spec, without the wheels or tires or lift kit or anything. Um, so I think our asking price is really reasonable. Um, and to buy something like this brand new to, nowadays, you're, you're talking maybe 70 grand or maybe more. But they'll run. Um, the point of that was you see them over in the, in the States for sale, like 250,000, 350,000 miles on them, so they will run forever. Um, they're a really bulletproof engine. Um, so this one's only 20, 22,000 miles on, it's a cracking motor. She re the thing that I could never get, I can't, still surprises me is how quick she, revving she is. It's a really free revving engine, you would almost think it was a petrol. You know, whenever you blip the throttle instantaneously, she rises up through the rev range. Sounds great. Um, look, absolutely tons of torque, so if you are using it for, for towing or hauling heavy loads, it'll do it without a problem. Um, it's matched up to an automatic 5-speed transmission with a column shift, um, I think it's 5-speed with overdrive. Um, I find that she's really, you know, she shifts through the gears really nicely. Um, she'll run, you know, low RPM. If you're doing 50 or 60 miles an hour, she'll run, you know, maybe, I don't know, 1500 RPM, maybe less. Um, it's really comfortable cruising vehicle if you're taking on a long journey. Now, obviously, with the big tires and the high suspension and stuff, she's um, not the most comfortable going over, like, bad roads, so if you're on back roads or rough ground, you really got to slow down and sort of pick your way through it. But if you're on nice open roads, motorways and stuff, the thing will sail along at 60 miles an hour, no problem at all. Now those tires are um, NATO, uh, these, are, these are 20 inch rims, so XD series polished chrome rims. They're 20 inch diameter and they are fitted with these NATO mud grabber tires. So they're 37 inch diameter tires by 13 and a half inches wide. Whenever I first got the truck, I thought I probably would change the tires, um, but I think it just looks that it looks seriously mean with those tires and the lift kit and the wheel arches and stuff. It really does look the part. They are they're definitely drone, so there's a lot of noise off them. Whenever you're if you're running this thing 50, 60 miles an hour, my kids say it sounds like an airplane taking off. <laughs> I can't really argue with them. It does. It's noisy. There it does drone, um, but I got to sort of like that, you know. It adds the whole experience to the thing. At the end of the day, you're driving a big, it's effectively like a, like a usable monster truck. This is not an everyday car. This is not the sort of thing you jump in to do a 10 hour journey, you know, for work down the motorway in the morning or something, you know, to get back home that night. This is more of a special occasion, like a road trip car, something you're mucking around in at the weekends, taking the car shows and stuff like that. If you wanted something that's more usable, Every single day, you might want to look at putting some road tires on there, and you might even want to look at taking the lift kit back off it again, because um, she is big and unwieldy and stuff. And it's not—it's not a race car. It doesn't go around corners very well. It just looks class, sounds really loud, and does go well in a straight line. She is she is sharp. The performance is good. Um, like 325 horsepower, 570 foot-pound of torque. She shifts. She she will. You can light up the back tires if you want to. Um, and she will make good progress, but at higher speeds, your really your usable maximum speed with this setup is about 60. Uh, you don't really want to be driving too much more than 60, just for the way it's set up. But she's pulling, she's driving really well. She sailed through the MOT there in June. She's MOT right up to June next year, 2019. Um, I'll show you under the hood now as well, so you know we look around the engine bay. I'll also tell you what we've done because we did take that we bought this thing basically out of long-term storage. In November last year, so we had a wee bit of work to do to get her back into like fully usable condition. So I'll tell you what we did um, now as well. So I have a record here of everything that we did to the truck whenever we got it. So um, we got it in October. It's dated the 21st of October 17. So that's whenever it came into our possession. Um, and what we had to do was replace all the brake calipers. So the brakes, the big, the big, the main problem was the brakes that sort of stuck, um, and the calipers were bad. You know the actual cylinders themselves are corroded, um, so we changed, or, ordered four brand new brake calipers and pads. The discs themselves were okay. We just machined them, you know, to clean them up, and we reused the existing discs. One of the things I really like about these American pickup trucks too is the maintenance costs are minuscule. Like we were able to get this stuff from the states. The calipers were like 90 quid a piece. Well, I think that was the fronts and the rears were 100 pound each. Um, we got an oil filter. We got a center link. 
I think it was on the steering, a fuel filter, and we also replaced the two shock absorbers in the back end of her. They were £35 each. So, you know, the, the part prices are, are really inexpensive. Um, in the States, and the shipping's not even that bad either. So, we did all four brake calipers, fully serviced the engine, uh, changed the the caliper or the, the rear shocks as well. There was a couple of other things. We put a new starter motor on it. The starter motor was just a wee bit dodgy, so we put a brand new starter motor on it. The batteries were replaced just prior to us getting the truck. Um, so there was two, the two brand new batteries in it as well. We got new light holders for the rear for the rear lights to convert those over to UK spec. Fitted the trailer socket. That was all the work was done March 18, so the trailer socket was fitted. We changed the brake fluid. Um, rewired the rear light system, installed new calipers. So we done a whole bunch of stuff. Prepped the vehicle for MOT. Um, did all the brake tests, suspension tests, all that sort of stuff. And we've got invoices. Anything else we put on it too? You know, we minor things like the satin black paint for the lights on the roof. Um, got the receipt for the import uh, paperwork exercise for getting her imported on the, on the UK plates. There's a receipt there for this Ford badge, uh, right the way down to the tow ball, the tow bar and, and tow ball as well. So we have a full record of everything that was done to it. So it's fully serviced now, up to date. All that work was done in March 2018. The truck's only done like 1,500 miles since then. Um, so she's ready to go. Um, you've got shouldn't have no more no maintenance or anything to worry about. She's MOT'd right up to June of next year. So she's fully sorted and you're just ready to. She's put on the road. Um, Swap a tax book over into your name and, and go trucking at the weekend. Uh, but I'll show you the. Uh, I'll give you a look at underneath the engine. I'm at the boot at the minute, so bonnet lifts up with two gas struts, and you've got this wee courtesy light in there as well. So, so taking a wee quick look underneath the bonnet, everything is clean and tidy. Um, there's no leaks or anything out of it. The, all the fluid levels are good. She's obviously been just serviced there within the last few months and the last thousand miles or so. Um, so everything looks looks clean and tidy. She looks the parts. She has the power stroke V8 diesel. She's a four stroke engine, 325 horsepower, 570 newton meters torque. There's a wee bit of surface cruising here on the intercooler pipe, but that's just purely surface cruising. We, we cosmetic thing. Um, two brand new batteries in her, um, and she's fully serviced and ready to go. So nice, clean, tidy engine. Be. We'll fire it up now. We'll let you hear how it how it sounds. You know when you're driving a truck, I mean it feels massive, so it's fine whenever you're on a big wide road like this, but if you're in around town or down back late, back country roads and stuff, you do, you have to be conscious of the size of it. Um, and it's a wee bit rattly and, you know, lumpy, it does, certainly doesn't feel like you're driving a sports car, but that's all part of the whole experience for me, and it's, whenever you get up to speed, you don't really notice the tyres, there's no real tyre noise at speeds sort of below 30 or 40 miles an hour but once you're getting up towards 40, 50, 60 miles an hour you really do get a bit of a rumble off the tyres. So if you put your foot down she does respond. She's gone up through the gears cleanly. There's a serious there's a serious roar off it. So you get a lot of lot, lot of the engine noise. A, a big exhaust is part of that. Um, but she does, I mean, for such a big, hefty, bulky truck, it really does, um, it does go well. But the gear shifts are smooth, you don't notice, you obviously feel the up shifts if you're accelerating heavily, but whenever you're just coasting along, you don't notice the shifts, you don't feel the down shifts or anything. This column shifter's really easy to use, you can kick it down if you want to, so the down shifts work. But nine times out of ten, I just leave it in D. Which is the easiest thing, and then if you want, if you're pulling a heavy load, you just hit the tow haul button, 
and that again she kicks down sort of just changes the shift pattern and stuff for pulling heavy loads um, she's tracking in a straight line you know the thing feels I'm not going to say it again it doesn't feel like a sports car or anything it definitely does wander uh, yeah, it doesn't really wander but there's a wee bit of furriness wooliness in the steering wheel it doesn't res respond instantly if you turn the steering wheel um, but I mean that's to be expected with the setup that, that it's running one of the things that I was concerned about whenever I bought it was that the brakes were going to be up to the job of stopping her so obviously we didn't skimp whenever it came to sorting out the brakes with, with brand new calipers and pads all the way around her but they really do uh, a great job of, of slowing this thing down. I'm getting this up to speed now, it's 50 miles an hour here now. So she's running along there in overdrive at about 1300 RPM. Um, there's a wee bit of tyre noise, road noise, but not much. Push her on the 60. Gonna give her a big crawl to get her up there. That's her running at 60 now. It's doing about 1500 RPM. And there is a wee bit of drone there off the tires, but it's not unbearable, like, you know. So there you have it. That's my 2007 Ford F250 Harley Davidson diesel truck. Um, Hopefully it's apparent from the video that this thing is immaculate, the, like the bodywork is unbelievably good. Um, she's totally sorted mechanically, starting well, driving well, doing everything it's supposed to do. She really does look the part with that big 6 inch lift, lift kit and the big wheels and tires and that sort of stuff. Um, it's, uh, I've sort of struggled and debated with myself for a long time whether to sell it or not. I mean I really do love the, tr the truck, it looks class. It, it generates so much attention. I can't think of anything else for this sort of money that's going to generate as much attention. Like I'd say if you rolled up behind a couple of Ferraris or Lamborghini in this thing, people are still going to be walking around this because it's so unusual on the roads around here. Everybody's taking photographs with it. They all want to talk to you about it. People want to have a run in it. It really is a sort of fun vehicle to run about in um, at the weekends. My problem is I just have well, very little time for doing that type of stuff, and we've got sort of too many weekend vehicles. Um, it is hard to live with on a on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, I've, I've tried it to use it as my daily driver, and after about a week or so, you really do want to get back into an ordinary car. It is hard to live with over a long period of time, just because where we live, you know, um, the roads are narrow, parking spaces are tiny, you know, so it is hard to live with on a day-to-day -day basis, but as a weekend, fun toy or a car to use for towing your boat or towing your race car or track day machine or something that's great fun or if you're buying it through a business and want to do a bit of promotion and stuff with it fantastic for that too it's going to get loads of attention everywhere you go so anyway that's the that's my Harley Davidson F250 if you like it if you've got any questions about it please don't hesitate to get in touch give me a call on the number on this page um, or you can drop me an email to sales at gulfstreamshop.com and I'll happily answer any questions. If you want to come and see it, have a test drive, you're more than welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video.